Okay, so we're going to finish 1.3. So I just had a few more questions to do and then some properties of the cross product. So the first question, find the equation of the plane 3 the origin with direction vectors Did I do this question already? No. Okay. So in the book, I notice they don't say what form on any of the questions, put in vector form or standard form. Uh, but I would tell you which form to put it in, okay? And I sort of wrote in on the questions for you to try for homework. I just wrote right into the book in standard form and vector form so that you would know. Okay, so find the equation of the plane. So remember, just to do vector form, this is easy if you're given two direction vectors because vector form is x, y, z equals a point plus, and we need two direction vectors. So direction one and direction two. And that's what we have. What's the point that they gave us? The origin, the origin which would be the point zero, 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 zero. So in vector form, we're done by just plugging that in. and that would be it. If they wanted parametric form, we would take out all the brackets and write e each equation. If you didn't put the zero, zero, zero there, it would still be considered a plane because we've got two direction vectors and it would be understood that it would go through zero, zero, zero if it didn't show the point. So what I'm saying is you could also have written it without that point because it is zero. And whenever that point's missing, it's understood to be through the origin. Right. Okay, B. So standard form <coughs> we want to use this equation and then we would work it out. For this we need both a point, which we are given the origin, and a normal vector. So the normal vector, the normal vector, n, is the vector a, b, c, and it is found by taking the cross product of two direction vectors that are in the plane. So we need to do the cross product. So if you remember us doing the cross product, I, J, K, and then we would put U in here, right, that's vector U, and then vector V. And we're going to work this out. Would it matter if we put V first and then U? What's the difference? The other go right, but if we're trying to find the normal for the plane, it wouldn't matter. Okay, but if you were just asked to find the cross product, then you're getting the wrong answer. We weren't asked to find U cross V, we just needed to take the two vectors. So the, so the answer is no, it wouldn't matter 
for this question, but normally it does, yes. For this question, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, you would get the opposite direction, so the normal would be sticking out the other side of the plane, but that would be okay. It's still the normal vector. Okay, so how do we do this? I minus J plus K, and that was just the formula, that minus in front of the J. Do you remember how to get these? So for I, cross off I and write the remaining four numbers. Do the same thing with J, so you'd cross off J and you'd look at the remaining four numbers, so 1, 1, 0, 2, and K, cross off K, 1, 1, 0, 1. So if you missed what I just did, it looks like a big mess now. And then we do the crosses, right? So I forward 1 times 2 minus going backwards 1 times 1. Forwards 1 times 2 backwards 1 times 0. Forwards 1 times 1 backwards 1 times 0. And I'm going to squish it in here. 2 minus 1 2 minus 0 1 minus 0. So our normal vector, 1 minus 2, 1. Now what do we do with it? Put it back in, and what's the point that was given? 0. Zero, 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 so easy enough. So our point is zero, 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 and our normal vector is one minus two, one. Right, it was one minus two, one. And we fill it in. So A, X minus zero, plus B, Y minus zero, plus C, Z minus zero, Now any plane, any plane through the origin always has a zero on this side. All right, if we had had another point, there would be a different number there. Okay, questions? Okay, so for the next question, I said given the plane uh, 2x minus 3y plus z equals 0, so that's a plane through what point? We just said if it has a 0 on that side, it's through the origin. So we know one point on that plane already. Find equations of plane in vector form. So in vector form, we need a point and then two vectors in the plane. So how do we go from an equation backwards? So we just found, were given the vectors and we found the normal and then found the equation of the plane, but this is giving the plane. How would we get the vectors back out? Yeah, that's a start. To do what? Exactly. So to find any vector, you need two points. So we need two vectors. So to find two vectors, we need three points. 
right, A, B, C, then you could find the vectors between them. So how do we find three points? So So plug in an X and a Y and then solve for Z. I always start with zero and zero. Uh, so here if we plugged in two times zero minus three times zero plus Z. So I could have, I actually did already say that was zero. So you may have noticed that it ended with zero and that's the origin. So how would we find another point? Plug in anything. So you can plug in x is 1 and y is 1, or 1 and 100. It doesn't matter what numbers. Plug in something for x and y. Um, I would probably do something like this if it were. So here's one point. For the second point, I would probably say, like, what if x were 1 and y were 0? What would we get? So if x were 1 and y is 0, I would have 2 plus z equals 0, so z is negative 2. So there's a second point. I usually just look and see what sometimes you can you can see if they would add up nice. Like, you know, if that were zero and the y were one, then the z would work out to be an okay number. But but it really doesn't matter. If you didn't even pay attention, you could say like say x is two and y is one. Two times two minus three times one. So everyone in the class could have three different points than me. It just depends what you plugged in, what points you'll get. Now these are not vectors, they're points on the plane, and then we can find vectors from those. I would probably give these a name, A, B, C. So then you can say, okay, let's do the vector A, B, and the vector A, C. Where A is zero, these will work out nice. This one will work out just the same. So 2, 1, minus 1. This A is 0. So if you subtract 0, you don't. Okay, so here's two vectors. Now don't do the normal again by mistake because then you'd be going back to what we just started with. But it would be a good check that those are vectors in the plane. And then we just wanted vector forms. So we would say x, y, z equals a point, any of the three points, doesn't matter which one, that would be a vector in, or a plane in vector form, this is vector form, what's parametric form? Right. So x is 0 plus 1t plus 2r. y is 0 plus, well, 0t, so just r, 1r. And z is 0 minus 2t minus r. So. They didn't ask for a parametric form here, but we use it a lot in later sections, so it's it's worthwhile to write it out. Okay, so a list of properties for the cross product.
So the first one, we've said this already, if you switch the U and the V, you get a negative of the answer. Right, you get the same answer but a negative, or the opposite sign. U cross V plus W. So here, just as in uh, a normal way, this would be U cross V plus U cross W. So that, and just the way you would normally think, U cross V and U cross W. Okay, so that works. Uh, three. So that property was the same with the dot product. If we have C as a scalar, any real number, then it could be with the U, it could be in front of the cross product or with the V and you would get the same answer. So what that's saying is if you noticed, so I said the same thing with the dot product. If you were doing a cross product and you had vectors like this, one over seven, 3 over 7 and, you know, negative 2 over 7. And then V was, and you want to do the cross product of these. Do you see that we could factor out a 1 over 7 here? There's a over 7 in each. So this U is 1 over 7 times 1, 3 minus 2. So when you do the cross product, you could take that number out and do U cross V and then put it back in. So the, it's helpful when there's fractions and things like that. All right, so other than that, you know, if there was a, a if you just had a question that said like 2 U cross V, you could do it in any order. If putting the 2 into one of them, either U or V works nice and then do the cross product, or if it doesn't, leave it out and then put it in later. Okay? So that's 3. 4, what do you think? U cross the 0 vector. What's that equal to? Zero, because in each of those little crosses, you're going to have zeros, right? So forward, you're going to go with the zero and backwards. So this is equal to the zero vector. Same as if we did zero cross u, that would also give us zero. U cross v dot u. The dot product tells us what about two vectors? Something about the angle, right? If it was a positive number, it's an acute angle. If it's a negative, it's an um, obtuse angle. And if it's zero, they're perpendicular. This is a vector. And it's actually a vector that is what? When we have our u and our v, and we do the cross product, it gives us a vector that's what? Where is that vector, if I were to draw it in? So these are, think of these as being in a plane. Right, perpendicular. So this would be u cross v. It's perpendicular to both u and to v. So it's perpendicular to both u and v. So if we have a plane that u and v are in the plane, then the normal vector is u cross v. It's the perpendicular to the plane, right? So what is this equal? Zero. This is perpendicular to u. So it's zero. And we could also say u cross v dot v would be also zero because it's perpendicular to both u and to v. 
and the dot product of zero means perpendicular. So those are always true. Nothing to work out. What if we did like u cross u? No. Let's just put in a vector. Let's say one, two, three. So if we put the same vector here and there, I times two, three, two, three. What do you think? Yeah, this will be six minus six. 3 minus 3, 2 minus 2, 0, 0, 0. So u cross u is 0. So if you cross a vector with itself, it's 0. So let me ask you this. What if I said to find the cross product of u and v. u is 1, 2, 3, and v is 2, 4, 6. So first I want you to notice that that's a multiple, right? It is multiplied 1, 2, 3 by 2. It'll still be 0. It'll still be zero. So this is v is equal to 2 times u. Do you agree with that? Right. So u cross v is actually u cross 2u. Remember that 2 can go anywhere? So this would be 2u cross u. And u cross u is 0. So it'll be the 0 vector. Without doing any work. Okay, so not only are, if you put the same, same vector in, you get 0, but any multiple of a vector will also give you 0. Questions? Seven. So number six and the example I just did should answer this question. If u cross v is 0, so if we get 0 as the answer, what does it mean about u and v? They're a multiple of each other, so they are parallel, right? So if you wanted to check if two vectors were perpendicular, what would you do? the dot product equals zero. And if you want to check if two, two were parallel, if you didn't just notice they were parallel, <laughs> then you could do the cross product equals zero. But usually you don't need to do that because you look at them and you, if you're asked, is, are these vectors perpendicular or parallel, you would say they're parallel because v equals 2u. You don't actually need to do the cross product to show that when you can see that they're already parallel by being a multiple of each other, okay? So you don't actually need to do this, but if you were told that about two vectors that you couldn't see, then you would know that they're a multiple of each other. If you were told that they were, that u cross v is zero, you'd know that they were um, parallel. The length of u cross v actually gives us the area of the parallelogram.
So if you wanted to find the area of the parallelogram formed, then you do the cross product and then find the length of that. What if we wanted to find the triangle instead of the parallelogram, if we have U and V, and we want this area. What would we do? If that's the area of the parallelogram, then how big is this? Uh, no, because that would give the parallelogram again, but going in the opposite direction. So not even that complicated. Right, divided by two. It's a half the parallel. It's a half of the parallelogram. So this would be the length of u cross v divided by two. Yeah, to get this side, you could do u u minus v, but then if you did that cross with these, then you're getting this parallelogram down here. Right? Yeah. But good thought, because our next section actually gets all complicated with the subtracting the vectors. I think it's a bit complicated. So you have to have the arrows going in the right way, so you have to keep thinking about which way your arrows go. Uh, okay. Oh, here's a good one. So what about this question? So ideas? So when do lines not intersect, first of all? Just as a side note. When would lines not intersect? They're parallel. Yeah. In R2, that's true. Um, write a parallel line to this that has a different direction vector or that looks different than that one? Yeah, because remember parallel direction vectors can be any multiple. So if I multiply this by 2, so I got like minus 2, 0, 2, that also would be parallel to this, right? Or it could be equal to that if, if it had the same points, but what about um, in our 3? So say we had parallel planes. If we had parallel planes, do they have any direction vectors in common? What's that? Yeah, the normal vector would be the same. They would have the same normal vector.
you could even say like the vectors are in the same direction in different places, right? But they also have the same normal vector. Okay, so back to this line. How would we, how, or this question, how would we figure out if the lines intersect and maybe where? these two lines in R2 just in, just going back to high school. Okay, how would we find the intersection point of these? What's one way we could do it? We were doing elimination here, but I just set these up. You could solve by setting them equal. And then you would plug that in to either one of the equations and solve for y. Do you, right? Does that make sense? That's what you would do. Can we do something similar here? Can we set them equal? Yeah. Now, how do you know when this had an intersection point? How do we know when it wouldn't have an intersection point? What would happen with something like this? What kind of lines don't have an intersection point? What kind of lines don't have an intersection point? If they're parallel, which means they have the same slope, so these wouldn't have an answer. When we go to solve it, if we set these equal to each other, what happens? Right, didn't work. Just didn't work, right? Yeah. So. Same here. So either we're going to set these equal, and what will we be solving for? T. That will be the unknown. And if we find a T, then they intersect, and we can plug the T in to find the answer. And if we can't find a T, then they don't intersect. So let's see what happens. So back to this question. Set them equal. So we would have 1, 1, 1. And I would probably just write out the parametric form so you've got some equations with t in it and then you could solve them. So what would this side be? 1 plus negative 3t. So 1 minus 3t. 1 plus 2t. And 1 plus t. Do you follow? And on this side, what would we have? So the first one would be 1 minus t. 3, and that's a 0, so just 3, and 5 plus t. All right, so where might we start here? They only have one variable, so I would just solve for t in each of them. The middle one is easy, but, but they're all just a t. So here, if we solve for t and we get different values of t, then it obviously didn't work because we want a value of t that makes them equal. So if we can't find one value of t, then it doesn't work. But if they're all the same, you know, all the same t, then it does work. So if we solve for t here, so say 1 minus 1 equals minus t plus 3t. So I can stop here now. Um, and the, actually, the last one doesn't even work. Do you see it? Yeah. yeah. But even if it did work, the last one, we already know there's no answer because you have to be able to get a value of t that works. Right? So can't work with different values of t. 
All right, that's not possible. So that's what you're trying to find is a value of t. So I did write a second example here. I'm thinking this one must work. So let's write it down just to see what it looks like if it works. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. We'll set them equal. You could just write the parametric forms out right, right away if you wanted to. set them equal, and then I just took them out of the uh, brackets. So far, so good. So yes, they do intersect. So what's the intersection point? No, not one, one, one. Yeah, how are you finding it? Plug T in. It, you, it's an intersection point, so it wouldn't matter which one. If this were a test or a final exam, I would probably check both, because you should end up with the same point. But you plug it in. X, Y, Z is what we're trying to find. So 101 one plus 1 times 2, 5, negative 1. Or you could plug them into the parametric equations. It doesn't matter. It's not a vector that's the answer, it's actually a point, so you have to be careful with the brackets, right? It's not a vector in common, it's a point in common. Yeah. And I just plugged it into the second one as a check. You should end up with the same answer or, or you messed up. And probably if you already got your 1, 1, 1 up here, you didn't mess up up here. Sometimes if you just plug it in wrong in the first one, or even in your check. Sometimes your check is what's wrong. But if you ended up with this, you know, you're probably good. Unless it really had no intersection point and you messed up up here and it, you thought it was all the same. What if we had to um, find, so if we had a plane, think, picture a plane, and then a line. So a line could cross through a plane. And how would it cross at a point, right, if it was cutting through? So say we had a question that said, find the point of intersection of this line and plane. Okay. 
So, find the point of intersection of the line So I didn't give the plane in vector form, I gave the plane in standard form. So what are, any ideas how we would do this? So we can't set them equal because we don't have two vectors to set equal, but you can plug one into the other. So how would that work? So let's rewrite the line in parametric form. So we have three equations. So what would the first equation be? x1 minus 2t. y would be 1 plus 1t. And z0 plus 3t. All right, so. That's my first step. What am I doing with that? Plug them in for x, y, z, and then we should be able to find a t. And if we can't find a t, then there's no point of intersection. This question said find the point of intersection, so you should get an answer. But if it said if it exists or something, then, then it might not have an answer. So if you couldn't find a value of t, it wouldn't work. So we have x plus y plus 2z equals 12. So x plus y, 2 times z, so what do we have? 5t plus 2. Now t equals 2 is not the point of intersection though, right? How would we find the actual point? How could you check your answer here? Could we plug the point into the equation of the plane and it should work? Here's your equation of a plane. So if we plug the point in here, it should work and give us 12, right, if it was in both? And it does. Three minus three is zero, plus twelve is twelve. So. Okay, so that's the end of one point three.